Hey, everybody. Let me get my messages over here going. <sighs> We're back. <laughs> we had a wonderful time in Hawaii. Um, I didn't know a person could relax like that. Um, might not have been a good thing that I went. Uh, two weeks there was phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I realized that with uh, Joan and Dan and Dara and Brooks, we have been traveling together for 25 plus years. So, and there's zero expectations on this trip. Now, while I chit chat while people are loading up, let me show you what I'm going to teach today. And, you know, we're nearing the end. I understand that. But this little stitch here, um, I love, and I'll show you the whole thing in a minute, but so easy, and I just filled it in like no tomorrow. Yes, I know I'm not um, on my silk piece, but they all translate back and forth. In fact, I took two silk pieces, two S Sue Spargo pieces, and one Joanne Sharp piece, and I just worked on my, uh, I worked on this one the whole time. Two weeks, two weeks, people. Two weeks, but isn't it cute? I'm so happy with it. I'm not quite done yet, but I'm getting there. Those little leaves, ooh, they're great. Okay, let's, I'm trying to get to comments here. There we go. Yeah, it is it is great to uh, be home. Pat Sparrow. Um, Sparrow is a little wobbly, but she made it, and the gal that took care of her said, yeah, she's got a lot of life left back in her. So uh, Sparrow kind of yawned when she saw us walk through the door because she was taken such good care of by Kathy. I, I will use her from here on out. The other thing is Kathy got hold of me and said, well, do you want me to trim her Tony nails? And I'm like, yes, I didn't know you could do that with cats. I thought that's why they went out there and did that. And so now when Sparrow comes and touches my face in the morning, she's not going like this. And I have to tell you, re-entry is rough. Last night I went to bed at 6.30. <laughs> I couldn't even make it till seven. But wait, it's better than that. I slept till 8 o'clock this morning. I think I woke up for at about 2 or at 1 for an hour. And I just, this is what I do when I wake up. I don't let my head start spinning. I just curled over in, and, and curled to John and went, oh. yeah. Okay, so I did bring some pictures. I, uh, wait a minute. Molly, you were watching from the Disney Resort on Hawaii. Um, that's where we were. We weren't at Disney. We were at, uh, we were in Koalinga where you were, and we were down at the Marriott. So I've got some, I got some pictures, and I mean, this is nothing, at least I'm not pulling out my slide projector, right? But I got some uh, good things here. But first of all, <clears throat> the first picture I want to show you is this, and this has to do with quilting. In the world of color, there is no such thing as putting wrong colors together when it comes to the same color family. So you look at this red that's kind of infused in a black brown, but there's red in it. I would use this together in a quilt. And it's funny because in Hawaii, you seem to see that more than not. If you look up a little bit, uh, there's a little green leaf that has two different kinds of greens in it. And so uh, this is part of my lecture, my color lecture, and that is don't get freaked out, man. If the greens don't match, the reds don't match, it all works together. And in fact, especially like in my Sue Spargo quilt, I've, I've, I'll show you a little bit when we get there. Um, this was the view from Koalinga. That was just two lagoons down from the Disney one we were just talking about. And I'll tell you something, I didn't put a picture in, but the last day we were there, it was really very rough waters. I've never quite seen anything like that in Hawaii, because usually it's pretty, you know, unless you're up in surfer land or something like that. Um, here is the view from our room at night. Trust me, that was long after I go to bed. People don't believe me, but guys, if I don't get 10 hours of sleep a night, it is really ugly the next day. I can do 11 too. It's just something that's always been in my nature. 
Okay, and then from our room also, one night there was a luau, so we didn't even have to go down there. And I didn't realize, but Joan explained to me that um, you can, um, that all the different dancers that come on represent the different islands. And so again, that was, um, we were, okay, so then we were in Maui first. And it was our 46th anniversary. And I said, I'm going to take us all out on a dinner cruise. Now, this is in Maui in Whalers Village. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, we were guided to go to Hula Girls, and I cannot express how lovely it was. We were, I think it was about a three-hour whale watching tour, and it did not disappoint. Oh, at one point, um, the captain said, uh, if you have a little kid that wants to come up and drive, come on up. And I'm like, John, I don't want to go up. I don't want to go up. And I look at John's up there and I'm like going, okay, I want to drive. And I will tell you this in, in Whaler's village, in that bay, a, a January, February, February is the height part of March. It is mating and having babies season for whales. And so Ricky Brooks used the expression of it's like taking a bunch of goldfish or fish and throwing them in a barrel and then just you can reach in and grab up. That's what it was like. There were whales everywhere. I mean, we could see them from our room even, okay? So uh, here's, I think this was a party of four, even though it just looks like three. And again, they're either birthing or mating. That's what they do during that time. And the captain of the ship explained that uh, the deal with the bay outside of Whaler's Village is that it's this deep, but if you go out to the ocean, it's this deep, and so that's why they come there to roost. Um, the other thing I learned is that when a tail goes up, that means they're diving, and they're going to go down, and then they'll come back up maybe 15 minutes later. And so, you know, you could see a bunch of people going towards an area, and you knew the whales were there, and there are certain rules with all that, but it, it I mean, it's it's phenomenal. And the other thing is that you'd see people out there in their little paddle boards, not way out where we were on the Hula Girls, but there's whales everywhere. And I'm like going, okay, you're brave. And I asked the captain of the, of the boat, um, who are the whales' natural enemies? And guess what? You probably know. We are. So what is this a picture of? Oh, okay. In the meanwhile, in the Tri-Valley, it snowed. <laughs> it never snows here, ever. And um, in the meantime, we were at 80 degrees, and I worked on my tan, oh no, with cream. <laughs> I kept up. <laughs> and then one morning, I woke up, and look what John had done on the beach. I love Alex. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Where are we? Oh, okay. Next to the last day, there was a mermaid in our pool. Oh, yes, there was. And she wasn't little mermaid. She was a Polynesian mermaid. Look at her tail, you guys. It is spectacular. It kind of reminds me of a monarch butterfly, only in a different colorway. Oh, the little girls were out of their minds. And I said to her, can I get a you know picture? My granddaughter is going to go out of her mind. And she goes, well, is your granddaughter here? I'll wait for her. <laughs> she got in there and swam with the kids and all that. So while the little girls were all happy, I was actually walking down to the Disney Resort or the Four Seasons and I tried to do it before it got too hot. And I don't know, I don't know if it was him or not, but there was this guy on a run and I almost lost my mind. Oh yes. <laughs> so if you know if he was there, let me know. He had on, didn't have a mask on and so those dimples were there. Um, he did have sunglasses and a baseball hat. So whether or not it was Mario Lopez, I am going to, um, I am going to pretend it was him. Oh, and sorry, ladies, his shirt was on. Okay, that's enough. <laughs>
let's get back to quilting. And speaking of quilting, this was in the Marriott Resort, I think. <clears throat> this really caught my eye. There were two gates. I snapped both of them, but this one in particular, because I thought, if that isn't a Christmas quilt about to happen, I don't know what is. I is spectacular, just spectacular. Okay, so you guys sent me, um, you didn't send me things. Oh, thank you, thank you. I got a couple things, but for the most part, I uh, <clears throat> went into the forum and grabbed some snaps. Okay, Kristen says, it is finished. <laughs> I can't wait until I see how you're gonna quilt it. I really, truly thought I was gonna be working on mine, my new, well, I didn't know which one. I got so many things, but man, this wool one just pulled me in. Uh, Noella, look at this. We've, we've watched Noella from Quebec's journey from the beginning when she didn't get her kit in a timely fashion. And I think that in the end, Noella, you ended up being the winner of the whole thing. I mean, and I'll tell you, now I'm going to tell you, now I'm going to tell you. I, I don't want to use the word concerned, but I didn't know where you were going in the beginning of this. And as being a good teacher, I try to just keep my mouth shut and watch. I am so glad I did that. That is phenomenal because basically you combined um, applique, kind of the brodery purse method, which means taking advantage of the shape or the, the picture and then appliquing it down and then doing all that. Oh yeah, there was koi in the restaurant. And these things were like this, and uh, Joan and I were eating out the last lunch or whatever, and one just jumped in the pond. I, I thought it was the mermaid coming. And then Irene, oh, here we go, Irene. Okay, this, remember this, when she was working on these ovals? Well, you don't have to squint too hard, but look what she did. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. This is when I wonder who really should be teaching this class. Wow, Irene, there's another one. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that just beautiful? Okay. And then Donna, what do we have here? Oh, I can't make this one bigger because the resolution was um, not great. But I, I put this up. You guys, and if the resolutions aren't good, I usually skip over it. But I didn't on this because this reminds us you can do it on any color you want. I mean, this is just extraordinary. And my guess is it is finished also. And this is Kaz. She said it is finished. And I got to tell you, Kaz, I may just copy what you did there uh, with my neutrals one because I love the way it goes out. And then it's just kind of a shadow of stitching. In fact, I'm 98% sure I'm going to copy. <laughs> And then here's Judy's. And look at all her little buggy bugs and all of that. So cute. So darn cute. Okay. So, all right. Let's take a look at, um, oh, oh, a couple things, a couple ads. Uh, with D. Christopher's color class, there are about a couple dozen kits left. And even if you're not taking the class. You may want to go check them out. Uh, Kristen and Dee did a beautiful job of choosing beautiful fabrics from each color family in both light, medium, dark. I mean, it, it's a it's a beautiful kit. So uh, PSA, we got a couple dozen left. Um, also, her don't forget her class on Saturday. There was something else. Okay. So let's take a look at this and what I worked on. Um, I guess I worked on Sparrow just to hold good thoughts for her. Let me see if I can clear this in. Okay, one of the things I did was I added Rick Rack, and I would not have done that without taking Sue. And the way I did it was I just looped around each one. Now the problem with Rick Rack is look what's happening here. It's kind of a big fat mess. So up here, I decided to take some green and go across like that, all right? And then that kind of helped tailed it down. 
And then on Sparrow, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to trim it off and then I'm going to just go over it with a couple more chain stitches. All right. The other thing I, I, oh, I did was the kite. I decided it needed, let me go to the big one, something else in the sky. And periodically we do have kites, not in our backyard, but in the school. And um, besides the leaf stitch, which I'm going to show you today, I mastered that stinking bullion stitch. I mean, 10,000 stitches later, I nailed her. And so that's what I'm going to show you on Wednesday is the bullion stitch. And the other thing I did, which I may do on my pot one, is right up here. I did this weaving grid that I have shown you in the past, and that just adds more texture and stuff like that. I was going to stitch on the plane, and then I had two glasses of wine, and my bullion stitches didn't come out so great. <laughs> so give it up. Just come back in. So, okay, so Noella says use fray check on the ends. It's a great way to stop the fraying very well. You know what? I think you're right, and I don't, and I think it dries clear, Noella, right? Yes or no, please. But it, it does, I think it does dry clear. So thank you on that. I kind of forgot about that. All right. So what we're going to do, <clears throat> this is so easy. And you could so easily do it, close your eyes, around um, in a circle or whatever. And if you're done with this, I, I trust that you may start on another one. Um, well, another one of these things because they're so much fun. But this was so cool. And here's one that I did in variegated. And I love how that turned out. So you could see like what the variegation does, which is super awesome. I was afraid of putting one here because I was afraid her little, it might look weird, but it doesn't. Okay, John's coming in. Yes, sir. Um, when are the neutral quits, quilt uh, kits going to be? I, I called Suzanne from Hawaii on Friday, and she said 10% of them were done. I'm hoping next week. And let me tell you something else before I get into the stitch. On International Quilt Weekend, make sure you join in. We've got prizes. We've got lessons and all that. I was going to kick off the beige quilt. And I thought instead, I'm going to do a pre-kickoff on Saturday. We're going to be doing these so long lives right here. I'm doing Saturday. Ricky's doing Sunday. I'm going to do, because it all applies to this quilt, this neutrals quilt, I'm going to do basically everything 101, from pressing to pinning to stitching to, I already said pressing, to pre-washing, um, to getting a perfect quarter inch. I, I have done this periodically, but I want to get it in one collective unit. And also, I will be taking questions and answers. So I will, and I will give you answers. <laughs> I'll be taking questions and your answers. I will for sure um, be collecting those before too. Basically, I'm going to hang out with you hopefully for a couple hours, same time, 10 o'clock. And I can't speak for Ricky, but I did write him and say, is this any way stepping on what you're going to be doing? Because originally I was going to do the neutrals. And he said, no, not at all. It's not going to step on it. So very excited about that. Okay. So, Rodney, all you have to do to join in is just be there. Also, you will be getting, open your newsletters. You know, somebody's going to win a, a Bernina 500 series machine as well as I know r and K's thrown in over 600 of stuff, AccuQuilt House. I mean, we got some really great prizes and so, and games and all that. So they've been working really hard on it and there you go. All right, so let's stitch a little bit. No, it is not this weekend, Cindy. Thank you for asking that. It is uh, the middle weekend in March. And honestly, I don't know what that is off the top of me. Probably John or Kristen can can um, jump in with that. Oh, will I be doing a tropical-themed quilt, Violetta? I don't know. I, I wasn't really sure until I saw that whale's tail. March 18th through 21st. March 18th through 21st. So what, is that in two weekends or three? I can't see. Three? Two? I don't know. Well, whatever he just said, that's March. Thank you, Noella. March 18th through 19th. Okay. Charlene, don't worry that you're late. You can always go and watch this on rerun. 
Oh, and I started another series called Inventing Anna. Oh, she was the get. Oh, it's so good. And it's a true story. All right, Netflix. So I'm back to using this pen again. I, I just love this pen. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this. Okay, and then I'm going to draw this. And I'm doing a leaf, and I'm not quite sure what it's a variation of, but it is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in this side here. <clears throat> okay. And then I'm going to come in here. i got to watch and make sure I'm doing it. This is so stinking easy. And remember, this purple pen is going to go away um, over the course of a couple days. Like this. And you can iron it. So I am just coming from up here. I could do them with my eyes closed, and now I'm having a hard time. When I come through, I'm going to take this under, and then that catches the stem. I hope it's okay I'm still doing this for a couple weeks, or I don't know what I'm doing. I'm re-entering. <laughs> I'm re-entering. Okay, see how my needle is over it. Oh, one of you wrote to me and said you're getting pretty good at um, embroidery from doing this project. I'm going to tell you on this uh, sparrow quilt, look at how that's going to go over. My embroidery has gone from horrible to pretty darn good. Also, the other thing I've learned is how to read instructions better. I know to pay attention to where the needle is in relationship to the thread. That is huge. And on certain stitches, I would have to volley from one book to another because in one book, I might not understand it, but in the next book, I might. So some of you have asked if there's an ultimate book for this, and I hate to tell you, I don't think there is. In fact, I ordered another one and I really expected it to be here and it's not. So I gotta check into that. Okay. Go under. Now I believe this Friday Barbara Black is on deck too because it is the first of the month for color. Uh, I'm sorry, for uh, down under. You know, these patterns are exclusive for the year that you remember. And when they go away, it goes back into the hands of the designer. Like, for instance, Wendy Williams. And you can buy the pattern from her directly. I'm gonna, I think I need to do one more right there. Right there. Thanks for coming back, you guys. I was afraid that... The mice might play while I'm gone. Another thing that I found I was doing, and I almost just did it here, is sometimes if you're sloppy, your needle can go through and pierce the thread, and that will mess everything up sooner than later, and that's especially uh, true with the bullion stitch. There. Look at that. Look how cute that is. I mean, seriously. And I'm just going to finish it. And then I'm going to see if there's any questions here, although John's pretty good about that. Look at these cute scissors that Dawn gave us. She's in my mini group at Christmas. Oh, I'm the cutest. I have no idea where she got them. Okay, so there that is. Lovely. So let's look at my crummy bullion stitches and then look at my good ones. Okay? So, okay, here. Let me see if I can get any closer. I, I, I realized what I was doing wrong with it, and we'll talk about this on Wednesday. It is a stitch like the French knot that takes practice. Okay, come on, things, stop. Okay, th these bullion stitches are pretty bad, okay? These are pretty good. I've got it. I understand it. The kite, here you've got bullion on the outside. And now I am going to, I've got to finish this thing up, but I'm going to do bullions on the outside edge here of this. And 
maybe a couple other places, but I had super fun filling in all this. All these stitches, people, are the same stitches that you can do on your silk and that I will do on mine. Let me put my pen here. So, <clears throat> I got to get some bugs on my thing too. Okay. I'm going to do a few more, Betty Joe. that's for sure. Gorgeous. Shirley, I learned embroidery at my mom's knee. So did I. Actually, my grandma's. You know, one of the things we did, and this is just an idea for a project, excuse me, when I was in high school, I got my dad a um, either denim or chambray, probably chambray work shirt, and I did stuff all around the collar, everywhere, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I wouldn't do denim. Denim's too hard, but like a chambray, um, if you had like a chambray dress, you could do stuff around here and all that. It'd be beautiful. Okay. Yeah, my th your three-year-old loved the mermaid. My kids were on the way down to LA to see their um, to see their cousins, and I showed them that mermaid, and they almost flipped. Well, one of the kids is a little bit older and started questioning it, and I said, "I am telling you right now, it was real." And, and I don't, I'm not quite sure how she got in the pool. I don't know because I would think her natural habitat would be out in the ocean. But then she knew the little girls couldn't come to her. So scroll back, snap a picture, show I saw a mermaid. She was amazing. And the fact that she would come and let little girls be with her, get pictures with her, tells me that she is as good as Ariel in Disney's in Disney's world. But she wasn't a she wasn't Ariel. Mm -mm. She was an islander. And so that just made me so happy. Let's see. Um. Okay. All right. So I will uh, see you guys on Wednesday. We're going to do that stinky bullion stitch. I would suggest you have uh, practice cloth to do it on and understand if you struggle with it, I struggled with it times 10 because I was never going to show you and I'm halfway afraid of what's going to happen. Okay, so what's going on today? <clears throat> I got to go and have more hearing tests done um, to make sure everything's A-OK. -okay. And then I am going to start working on what I'm going to teach on my two segments of the quilt show. And one of the things I'm going to teach is how to take a mistake in a pieced quilt and fix it without undoing it. And then I'm going to also show how to make a really cool tote to carry all your stuff from, from here to there. So, okay, guys. Wait a minute. It says new comments. Oh, wow. Um, is it like the twilling stitch? I don't know what the twilling stitch is, Pearl. I'll have to look it up. Um... Mary Amico, yes, I did get my wool from the Sue Spargo website. Uh, we do have a store in town here, in between stitches if you're in the area. They've got uh, Sue Spargo wool. I, uh, it's very costly. I asked for it for Christmas from my kids. And I know they look, there's like little eighth yard cuts and like, well, it's, it's what you need. And what's so funny is what Joey did was he put together with a spreadsheet and then came up with the colors and the fact is I thought I was done with it and then when I needed this little um, kite here that was from one of the packets they gave me so and I got to figure out what I'm going to do in there too but oh, I lose one. so I'm so happy to be back with you guys I'm so happy I got 13 to 14 hours of sleep last night <laughs> so happy and I will see you soon remember make sure that you're a member of the website and that also you get our e-letter so you don't miss out anything because we've got great things coming your way. Barbara's on Friday with the block of the month and D is on Saturday. If you're considering D's kit, get it now. And I'll be able to tell you more about the neutral quilts at some point as soon as I completely re-entry. Bye-bye, guys. It's great to see you again. Thanks for choosing to spend your time with me.